do it for the views. What's up guys? Welcome back to Dareswith Land and today we are doing something crazy. I clicked the stop button on the camera and walked over to where my guest for this video was waiting. I set the camera up and started recording again. For this dare I'm bringing along. I swung my arms to the right and she jumped into frame. What's up everyone? I smiled. My sister Miriam. I pulled out my phone and made a show of scrolling through comments, even though I already knew what we were going to be doing. Oh. Today's dare is staying overnight in a graveyard. Miriam faked a gasp and threw her head back. No. I laughed. It's too late to back out now. I turned off the camera and we went inside. Miriam looked at me. Are you sure about this? I winked at her, making her smile. We spoke simultaneously. Do it for the views. We finished packing our bags, filled with supplies that the camera wouldn't see. I shot a video once a week, doing different crazy challenges. Mary showed up most on my channel. She supported me from the first subscriber to the millionth subscriber. Today, we were staying overnight in a graveyard. Mason Hill Graveyard, to be exact. Said to be the most haunted burial ground in all of Colorado. Luckily, Mary and I didn't believe in ghosts or anything like that, so we'd be fine. What I was worried about was whether or not the content would be interesting enough. When it comes to YouTube, you either succeed or you don't. She was waiting for me at the door. I had gone to the wrong front door. It was easy to lose each other in a million dollar home. She smirked at me. Why would I try to leave the house from behind exactly? I shrugged, knowing that a blush was rising to my cheeks. I don't know, guess I thought you wanted to walk through the woods first. She rolled her eyes but laughed. Boys, you're so terrible at admitting you're wrong. I finger gunned her. Darn right we are. We laughed, and I slung my arm around her shoulders. You ready to sleep with the dead? She slapped my hand. Don't say it like that, you creep. Smiling, we walked out the door, just us and two cameras. Making our way to a night that we would never forget in the many years to come. I drove us to the place where we'd stay for the night. We hopped out of my car and stood before the gate. Filming a quick segment of us entering it, we turned the cameras off to set up camp. No tent, people wouldn't find that interesting in the video. Two sleeping bags later, we were preparing to continue filming when we heard something. A branch snapping in the woods that surrounded us. Turning quickly, we scanned the dark trees, only to see nothing. Mary shrugged and turned back to the camera, fiddling with it more. Meh, it was probably just a deer. I tore my eyes away, knowing my voice would sound uncertain. Right, totally. Wind blew through the graveyard, pulling our jackets away from our skin, swaying the tall branches overhead. We huddled close, shivering as the strong wind gusted through the trees, tugging leaves away from the creaky old trees. I looked at her, my little sister, her blonde hair blowing across her face her blue eyes wide with fear. I almost didn't see it happen. I saw her lips trembling with the cold, saw her mouth slightly open, watched, as it opened to let out a scream. She flew backwards, blood streaming from a cut on her cheek. She went to sit up when something grabbed her, yelling out to me as it pulled her backwards by her hair. I shot up and raced to her, grabbing her hand and pulling her to me. Her hair fell onto her shoulders and we ran to get to the gate. What was that? She shook her head, tears falling quickly. I don't know, we need to get out of here. I could barely hear her over the whistling of the wind, the sound of my heart racing in my chest. Just as we got to the gate, it slammed shut. I heard voices all around me, murmuring unintelligible nonsense. Muffled screams echoed around us bouncing off the iron fence. That's when I saw her, a pale white girl, 
curly red hair, and dark red eyes. She was staggering towards us, her head tilted, she wore a smile that would have scared grown men. Her body was dripping blood, her tattered dress barely hanging off her shoulders. Mary, get behind me! She turned and saw the ghost screaming. Landon! That's Katie! I took a second look at the demonic figure heading towards us, and realized that she was right. Katie was Mary's ex-best friend, she died years ago in a car accident. She was identical to the girl in front of us. Suddenly, the girl stopped, throwing back her head and cackling maniacally. I threw my arm around Miriam, putting myself in front of her. I don't know if I could really call her, her. She, or it, definitely wasn't human. I saw a knife in her hands, which must have been what cut Mary. We were going to die. Katie giggled to herself and creeped ever closer to us, the voices and the screams getting louder and louder as she approached. In one leap, she was face to face with me, slicing the blade through the air. I felt a hot pain in my left shoulder and cried out, this was bad. She grabbed me by the neck, her fingernails digging into my flesh. You'll pay for what you've done. Her voice was shallow, raspy as if multiple people were talking in the place of one. I clawed at her hand, trying to get her off me. I have no idea what you're talking about. My voice was weak, labored. Miriam tried to pull me off but Katie sunk her weapon into her leg. She fell over, clutching at it, and screaming in agony. You fool! You've awakened spirits of power that you could never understand. You've destroyed us all! She smiled at me as she began to squeeze. I saw my life flash before my eyes, I really did. I always thought that that was just an expression. Until I was facing death. I saw Miri and I, filming our first YouTube video together. I saw my dad playing dinosaur with us when we were kids. Then I saw my sister, so brave and strong, plunge the knife into Katie. Obviously it wouldn't kill someone that was already dead but it caused a high-pitched screech and laughter. Giving me enough time to wrench myself away from this, whatever she was, ghost, spirit, take your pick. We bolted to the gate and pulled it open, running out and into the car. I don't think I've ever driven so fast. Miriam curled up in the seat and cried. I rubbed her shoulder, trying to comfort her when I myself was crying too. We got home and dressed our wounds, some of them were deep. I refused to leave her side the rest of the night. How could I? Fifteen years later. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I shut off the camera as my mom walked in. Alex, aren't you supposed to be doing homework? I looked at my feet. I was a freshman this year. Homework was way harder than last year. But mom dash. She held up her hand. Young man, I do not want to hear any arguing, you understand me? I agreed to YouTube, if you get your work done first. I dropped my head. Yes ma'am, I'm sorry, I just got a really good idea for a video. She looked at me, her eyebrow raised. Really, what's that? I smiled. Staying overnight in that old graveyard by the soccer field. She straightened up, her eyes hardening. No, absolutely not. On no account are you to ever set a foot in that cemetery. You hear me? Never. I was confused. She usually let me do crazy things for videos. Well, I dash. Miri! I have five bags of groceries and I require assistance. Uncle Landon, Mom turned and helped him. He came in and greeted me the way he always did. By messing up my hair. She turned to him. I was just explaining that he isn't allowed to go to the graveyard. His eyes widened and he looked at me. You listen to your mother, all right? Don't go in there. Whatever the situation is, do not. They looked at each other, the sun illuminating the scar on mom's face. I saw deep and seated pain in her eyes, nothing but sadness in her expression. 
I had a feeling there was something that she wasn't telling me. After a second she sighed and looked at me. Just remember kiddo your life is more important than YouTube. If it is dangerous, don't do it for the views. The end. Believe. While normal teenagers were out partying, taking their siblings out trick-or-treating, and doing pranks, I was in the basement searching for my sleeping bag. I knew it was down here somewhere, but then again maybe mom got rid of it when Jared moved in. Who's Jared, you ask? That would be my mother's husband, my stepfather. He's a pain in the butt because all he does is sit around all day and watch YouTube videos on his laptop unless he's working. So, back to my great sleeping bag search. I had looked in every nook and cranny, including under the staircase. Oh wait, no I didn't. Aha! I found it! I shout. Jared replies with a grunt. Found what? My sleeping bag! I yell back, carrying it back upstairs. Right when I did, I heard the phone ring. I dashed to answer it, hoping my best friend, Grace, would be on the other end. Hello? I ask eagerly. Hey, babe, greets my boyfriend, Logan. Oh, it's you. I mumble, but he still hears me. Jeesh, he says, laughing. I was just calling to see if you're ready to go. Oh. Yeah, I'm ready. I'll meet you out front, I say, and then hang up the phone. Where are you going? Jared asks sternly. To Logan's house, I say. He groans. I'll be back sometime tomorrow, I add. You're spending the night with him? He growls. What does your mother think of this? Honestly, she doesn't care. You do know Logan and I have been dating for over a year. Whatever, he says with a smirk. Just watch out. Tonight's a full moon. Almost on cue my little brother, Jake, jumps into the room and holds up my baby sister to show off her, moon. I'm leaving. I announce and walk straight out the front door. Logan's waiting in his truck out front, and as soon as he sees me he jumps out to open the door for me. Hi, he says, kissing me on the cheek. Hi, I reply shyly. All right, in the car, he says. I've got big plans for tonight. When he starts the truck, I ask what the big plans are. We're having our own sleepover, he says. In the graveyard. Wait a minute, in the graveyard? I ask. He nods with approval. On Halloween night? Yep. On a full moon, I wince. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever once had a sleepover in a graveyard, Logan? I ask hoping he says yes. Nope, this will be my first night in the cemetery. I moan as he drives down the street to his house. He's killing me right now. It's just the two of us. I smile coyly. Yeah, I told you that, didn't I? I dunno, I respond, still smirking with an evil gleam in my eyes. He turns to look at me as he turns off the ignition. He raises an eyebrow. What's that face for, Leah? Oh, nothing, I say, when I really mean something. You two be smart tonight, says Logan's mom, Mrs. Hansen. Okay, mom, Logan says obediently. We will, no problem. I smile kindly at her. I mean it, she reminds us once more as her and Mr. Hansen walked out the door in costume. Where are they going? I ask once they're out of earshot. Some lame costume party downtown, he says frowning at me. Why couldn't we have been normal and gone there too? I wonder out loud. Logan laughs. Chill, Leah. It'll be fun. I promise. Oh, yeah? I say sarcastically. Because getting eaten alive by zombies and cursed by witches is fun. Yeah, Logan suddenly says. 
It is. I had a friend whose ex and her best friend witnessed a ghost last Halloween at the same graveyard. It was just sitting by this grave of someone, and then an earthquake hit. I laugh, but stop abruptly when I see he's serious. Some teenager was found dead, murdered by the same gravestone after the earthquake hit. That's so stupid, Logan. I say rolling my eyes. Ghosts aren't real. Yes, they are, Leah. He says seriously. Trust me, you'll see one tonight. He continues in a low whisper. Just hopefully not old Gray. Who in the heck is that? I ask, getting butterflies in my stomach. The ghost who was sitting by the gravestone right before the earthquake hit. The one who was supposedly the one who murdered that kid. Oh, shut up, Logan. I say shoving him. We both know ghosts aren't real. Maybe, yeah, you don't believe in ghosts, but I do. I swear. Fine then, I say. Let's go to the graveyard tonight, and see if we get murdered by whatever that stupid ghost's name is. Old Gray, Logan reminds me with a slight smile. And I continue. We'll see if I come home a believer. As Logan's truck crawled up to the cemetery gate, I started to get butterflies again. What was I getting myself into? Did I really think some ghost was capable of murdering humans? There were few people in the cemetery when Logan and I started walking, sleeping bags hung over our shoulders. Most of the people were sitting by certain graves, crying and praying, while others were standing around with their arms raised up to the sky chanting words I couldn't understand. Logan said those people were devil worshippers. They believe strongly in magic and those who come back from the dead. We passed several younger teenagers with rolls of toilet paper in their hands, laughing and smiling, having a good old time. And yet, here I was holding hands with Logan as we approached our spot, an empty grassy opening a good distance away from the gravestones and crosses. This is it, Logan said, dropping his bag and sprawling out on the grass. I cautiously did the same. This was it. I must have fallen asleep because the next thing I knew Logan was shaking me. I rolled over, rubbing my tired eyes, and then realized it wasn't my boyfriend. Ah! I screech. I sit up fast, and find myself face to face with a white, glowy figure. I look around quickly for Logan's sleeping bag, but find nothing. Ah! I scream again. Ah! Don't be afraid, says the glowy figure. I'm only a ghost. I try to speak, but can't even part my lips. I say again don't be afraid. It is all Hallow's Eve and I am only here to protect you from the ghost of Bernie Gray. I finally relax a little, and open my mouth a little to speak. You, you mean Old Gray? Yes, the ghost of murder. He is roaming tonight just like last October and searching for his prey. That's not very assuring. I say, still trying to cool myself enough to grab back on to reality. Where's my boyfriend? I say, suddenly remembering Logan. The ghost stares at me, and then turns and hovers away. Hey! I shout. Come back! I gather myself up in a moment and take off after it, not trusting that this is all real. When I finally catch up with the ghost, I make out a tall, broad figure. Another ghost? Please no. As the shadowed figure steps into the dawning light, I make out its relaxed face, caked with dirt. Logan! I cry, throwing my arms around him. Leah, he says, we're in danger. I told you tonight was to make a believer out of you, and well the real reason is that I have to be here to stop old Gray. I'm a ghost. I can't believe my ears. Logan just told me he's a ghost. How is that possible? He's been human up until tonight. Did he die? Logan, I say quietly. Are you dead? Yes, he says, looking pale. My stomach turns and I bend over to vomit. My boyfriend is dead? How did this happen? How did you die, Logan? I gasp out. He looks at me seriously and speaks. 
I was the kid who Old Grey murdered last Halloween. I had one year to defeat him, otherwise, I'd turn into a ghost forever, not just on Halloween. Hold up, Logan. I say. You were murdered last Halloween, but returned to human form? Until now. When the sun rises I will die ultimately and be a ghost forever. I shake my head. Why didn't you tell me? We tell each other everything. I was afraid you wouldn't come if I told you, and I can't bear dying without my girlfriend here with me. You are not going to die tonight, you hear me? I say. We are going to defeat that ghost and release you from his undertaking. And how are we going to do that, Leah? Fight. The ghost, Myra Adams, who had helped me find Logan said the only way to release him from Old Grey's grip was to get the necklace around his neck. That necklace held Old Grey's victims in it, and without it he wouldn't be able to kill anyone else, and all those he had killed would be set free. Our plan was to distract him with Logan and Myra, while I swoop in from behind and grab the necklace, smashing it to the ground. Once it was broken, Logan and all the others would be released. We found Old Gray sitting on the tombstone of someone named Dave Franklin. That must be his next victim, I thought. As I hide behind a large grave, Logan and Myra go running up to Old Gray. Why, hello there, old friends, Old Gray says sneerly. I creep up behind him, and Logan and Myra keep the conversation going with him. One, two, three, four, five. I count silently. Logan touches his elbow to his forehead, the cue. I charge the ghost, rip the necklace from his neck, and throw it to the earthy ground. Crack. I step on it with my tennis shoe, and it smashes into a billion pieces. No! Shouts the ghost, as it withers up and disappears. Suddenly a hundred ghosts surround me, and one by one they turn into human form and run off, released from the murderer's powers. Logan, we did it! I scream, hugging him. Logan and I walked hand in hand back to the truck, after we said our thanks and goodbyes to Myra. Right as we reach the gate, the sun rises, and I glance at Logan to clarify he's still well and alive. He is. Well, Logan says leaning closer to me, Did I make a believer out of you or what? Oh, Logan! I say, I believe forever and always. We seal that belief with a kiss. The end.